All right, so it's been a little bit, we're back. Today we are timing it. So I have the crank on its position. I've got all the cams on their correct timing positions. One nice thing about Subaru motors is that the, all the cam pulleys, or sprockets, excuse me, the crank sprocket, the timing covers are all marked. There's a mark on the oil pump. So you, once you line all this up, the belt is also marked. It's pretty much impossible to screw this up. I mean, it is possible to screw this up. But if you have everything lined up correctly, you have your marks on your belt lined up correctly with your sprockets and your sprockets are lined up with your timing cover, it's pretty hard to mess up. Other like makes, you may only have marks on the sprockets and on the belt or maybe the marks are not quite as prominent. It's just like you go off one like area. It's not a, a dead like set mark. So Subarus make is, are pretty easy to time. Currently I have all the pulleys on except the cog gear, this guy. This is the way I do it. If you don't have a tool to lock your cams, this side is on base circle. So there's, these are completely unloaded. These cams are loaded on this side, which makes it a little bit difficult to time. You gotta be careful because they'll flip easy. We also have all the belt guides uh, off just to make things a little bit easier so they don't get in the way of putting the belt on. So on a Subaru belt, this is actually a Gates belt, but on pretty much any timing belt for a Subaru, it's all the same. You've got the dash mark, hopefully you can see that, is your crank mark. And then on Subaru belts, it's also the same. You got arrows for which way to put it, because if you put it this way, it's gonna be wrong. This way is correct, it goes with the rotation of the motor. Here's your first cam mark. Here's your second cam mark. Here's the mark for the exhaust on the right bank, intake, right bank and then you're back to crank. So, the way we're gonna route it is, I'm gonna put it onto the crank. And I will say this belt we are reusing from another motor. It was pretty much brand new. If your belt is in good shape, meaning no cracks and it's not like all dry rotted, and you can still see the timing marks, not, it's not 100% guarantee that it's safe to use, but Use common sense. Sometimes you can reuse them. Sometimes it's just best to replace. Okay, so this cam started to flip. Luckily the belt kind of caught it. This is another special tool. You can use the hex bolt that holds the sprocket on to turn them as well. This just makes things a little bit easier. All right, don't leave sockets or uh, ratchets or tools on the cams in case they flip because if you get smacked by one it's gonna hurt. We're gonna go underneath. This is eventually gonna go up over top. You go know, underneath for now. You got a good amount of slack. Your belt currently. I just turned because these uh, well they came off on that side. But what I was saying is I just turned these backwards a little bit. I turned them forwards to get them to get the belt underneath this idler. And because these are unloaded, I can turn these by hand. I just turned them back to give us more slack down on this side. So now I gotta go back to this side because these came off. That's what happens. Like I said, I, I put a little slack on this side of the belt, so it came off. So I had a little slack in between the two sprockets up here. I took that out by turning this cam forward. Now, this part can be a little bit tricky. All right, that's hand tight. So now, what I'm gonna do is pick this up. And you're gonna have to pull hard. I'm standing on top of the engine stand so I don't pull the motor over. Oh, yeah. And then slide it over. And that is timed. So, I'm gonna go back and check your marks. This one's lined up, this one's lined up. Our crank is lined up, this cam is lined up, and this one is also lined up. 
So if you're confident with your timing job, now's the time when you can pull the tensioner pin. Pull that out. Then just give your tensioner Helps it tension the belt. You don't have to go crazy with the pry bar. Just, uh, you know, you'll, you'll feel it. I mean, if it stops moving, you're done. You know, you don't, don't go crazy on it. You might damage something. But that's how you time it. Now you just have to set your belt guides. I think the clearance is one millimeter. So if you got feeler gauges or something like that, or if you happen to have a one millimeter hex key, I know they make them, not everybody has them. You can stick one in there. Anything that's like a millimeter. Doesn't have to be exact. Don't make it too loose where the belt can skip a tooth. But that's it. That's a little charred. Oh my! Ah!